Let's jump back into the next game. What do we have? Dr. Aegon. Cast three spells to get a random common treasure. Elect Drake. Your treasure buffs are improved by plus one plus one. And Athena. I tend not to run Athena because I think that their ability is boring. It's when you your characters that survive get plus two health. The characters that die get plus two attack. And uh, this card's actually kind of just ridiculous. It is incredibly early. It just makes your early game very, very strong. You can really quickly finish a, uh, you know, Jealous Stepsisters quest. You can uh, make sure you're hunting with your early game hunt abilities. It's it's just very, very good. Uh, I think I'm pretty happy with my board as it is. I'm not really that interested in any of these. So, yeah, let's save that deck. All right, we're playing Athena. Uh, let's start by doing the Daughter of Athena. That is a flavor win, if nothing else. Ooh, great. Straight into a silver. And I think I will take Plunder Penny because I love her. She is great. She probably won't be able to successfully hunt at this point in the game. It's only turn one, so there could have been something with only one health. But there's enough stuff that has more, like, Daughter of Athena. Um, so that's not a huge deal. We could go into Evil Stepmother here, which is a pretty good early game uh, treasure bonus. But I think I'm just going to go with the Mysterious Egg. Mysterious Egg is a very cool... If you have it die, it can get a really decent attack before it's even transformed, making it not even that much of a liability on the board. So I think I will throw it out into the front. And other than that, uh, Jack in the Box is pretty decent because it can die twice in the same turn, triggering the Athena bonus two times. So I think I might go with that. Or I could go with the Despicable Shmi and make sure Plunder Penny can keep going. I think we go with this Despicable Shmi. I just really, really like this Despicable Shmi. Okay, and go. That hunts because it previously wouldn't have because it was only a 1-1, one, one, but it was able to because of Athena buffing it last time it died. Uh, that might not be entirely true because it did get a bonus from Despicable Shmi, so maybe that's uh, incorrect. Either way, we could either go for Silver Mysterious Egg here, which will make our Mysterious Egg uh, just a little bit better in the meantime, and the resulting creature will also be Silver. Uh, or we can go Katamari to help trigger our Daughter of Athena. I do quite like Katamari, but I find they never scale well enough. So I think I will just take the Mysterious Egg. And we will Silver the Despicable Shmi. That sounds great. And a Baby Bear. Sure, why not? Baby Bear is not super relevant to our board, but it will trigger our Daughter of Athena. And we can always get more animals later. Oh, speaking of more animals, Cowardly Lion is available. I do really like Cowardly Lion, however, since they're not a hero, I can't just replace my daughter of Athena with them, which is a little disappointing. I think I'm just going to go with Presence of Gaia on Plunder Penny. First slot, having a buff is always nice, makes it so that there's a decent chance they will survive. In this case, they did not, but that's fine. And finish them off. Beautiful. Love to see that. Ooh, Santa Claus is an interesting pick. If Santa Claus survives, Daughter of Athena is really going to help them continue surviving, but they have to survive. Now the question here becomes, do I want to take them and replace Daughter of Athena? Because Daughter of Athena does not need to be... I can replace them in the same turn that I am finishing their quest, which would be nice. But they're a 6-6, six, six, honestly, so maybe I'm better off replacing the baby bear, which is only a 3-5. I think I'm going to do that. Let's take the Santa Claus, put them in the back. Oftentimes, people want to put the Santa Claus in the front so that it takes hits. I find that uh, they actually work a lot better in the back row because you're not running into the strongest units that your opponent has, and you're not taking any hits before there are spaces on your board. I have three silvers. I'm actually kind of tempted by the gold ring, but probably that's not worth it. Probably something like fortifications is better, or twin shot for that matter. Let's go with twin shot. Just get some good attacks on. Uh, we could pivot back into baby bear. They are a 6-6, six, six, which makes them pretty dang good. Um, I don't know. Do I care about that? I think I will take them, but I don't think I'll take them off to my board. I think I'll just roll this. And Shant Ooh, Cowardly Lion is back. I could just replace my daughter of Athena now, or I could replace my Santa Claus and just never get a chance to use them. Santa Claus isn't super relevant for my board, but... I think I'm going to go with the Cowardly Lion. It's not that much smaller. It looks smaller because 
four is half of eight, but it's not really that much smaller, especially when its goal is to take hits, not deal damage. I think that that should be fine. Okay, took one hit. That's beautiful. We got a hunt there. That's great. We did survive attacking with our Santa Claus, so we got to make a summon, and beautiful. Since our Cowardly Lion survived, I think it's going to make it easier for him to survive. Same with Santa Claus. Oh, what a beautiful round. And our Mysterious Egg hatches into Daisy Jones. Wow, I love Daisy Jones, but hardly ever get a chance to use them. So getting an early Daisy Jones really lets us build around it before it's their time to shine. That is beautiful. I might even go into Raggedy Ann for that. Oftentimes Raggedy Ann is... I don't know, it's not really going to work for us, I don't think, because... Daisy Jones, Hunt, Trigger Farewell, Farewell, Summons a Thing, so there needs to be a spot. Also, we don't have lost any hearts yet, so Raggedy Ann isn't actually doing much. So I'm not sure about that one. It might be time to remove our Despicable Shmi. I actually wouldn't mind Baby Bear. As much as we ditched them earlier, we now have a Cowardly Lion that could really benefit from them. And Sarmina is not in our board, but they are very good, and we might end up getting one later in the game. I think I do replace Shmi here. So let's take Baby Bear over Shmi. That lets us get some more things. I tried a Wand of Strength build recently, and it did not go as well as I wanted. I kind of went really hard into it, and it did not work. Dwarven Cart can add up, but it's really hard unless you have a lot of treasures coming in. Uh, I oftentimes end my games with only like three or four treasures, and so it's not really doing much. Lich King's Heart is always good. If you don't need it, then you win. If you, then you won the game. If you did need it, then, you know, you, you, you needed it and you would have been lost. So, as much as it doesn't impact my board currently, I think I will take the Lich King's Heart. Also, if we end up do going into Ragged again, it's one more heart that we have lost. Um, I do absolutely adore Goodie Bag. I don't really have a lot of benefit of it right now, unfortunately. Which could be kind of annoying. Annoying? Annoying? I think I might actually try and go goodie bag. I want to see how this works. I think it won't, but I would like to see. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, Daisy Jones just died, so we don't get to find out. But that is a powerful... Hey, we finished Jealous Stepsister's quest! Even though we summoned them, this counted. So we finished her quest, that's amazing. Uh, Bounty Contract is a great opener. It's also very good if we want to build up our goodie bag by putting them in the front here. They can actually maybe hunt and, and get some, some bigger strength. It's a little bit of a non-bow with our Cowardly Lion, unfortunately. But I think it's still probably worth it. I will take Bounty Contracts. As I mentioned in previous videos, Bounty Contracts' main benefit in my mind is simply making the characters count as having a hunt ability. Because certain things care about just things that have hunt abilities. Now, Plunder Penny has been doing a lot of work for us. Um, I don't know exactly how much they've been up to because we I don't have a spell here to look at. But uh, they have one health. I did not realize how little health they have. That is kind of funny. They've never survived, I guess. Uh, so as much as I want Daisy Jones to be able to trigger the goodie bag, I think I really want the goodie bag in the front to be able to keep hunting. I think this is what I want. Yes. Other than that, nothing super exciting. Let's just take a lightning bolt and make sure we survive. And I could replace Cowardly Lion. I like them a lot. I just think they're good. Let's take three bakes full. Let's just get some treasures. Why not? Ring of Valor is not bad. Warren Shield. Yeah, I think the Ring of Valor. It's just heroes get plus two plus two in the shop. So nothing that's already on our board, but that's fine. Our goodie bag did manage to hunt. That's beautiful. And then so did the resulting creature. So currently our currently our Daisy Jones is not actually triggering a hunt ability, or a, a farewell ability, but eventually we will be able to get some. I'm going to take Santa Claus here, get ourselves a nice gold. Ooh, we have Dwarven Cart again as an option, but we also have Achilles High Tops. Now something I don't often go into, but it is a hero buff. We only have Santa Claus as a hero. And the heroes need to be attacking. No, it's just it's just each fight give your heroes plus three. Okay, that could add up to a lot. I think the plus ten attack on pirates though is gonna add up to the most. We have two pirates on our board already. So we and we are oftentimes pirates want other pirates, so we're kind of encouraged to go further into pirates if we see them. So I think that's okay. play. Other than that, we are up to five treasures. So Fairy Dragon is currently giving plus five plus five effectively. 
which is not bad, but I think we could do better than that. I'm sorry, kind of surprised that Cowardly Lion has, has been dying, has not been surviving any hits. I think I'll actually give them a bonus for Spoonful of Sugar. We can see that our Plunder Penny has given us a total bonus of plus three attack, and this normally gives four health. So I guess it's only gone up three times, which is not as many as I expected, but that's not so bad either. Let's give that to our Cowardly Lion to help them finish their quest. If possible, it's always good to try to invest in the goodie bag because they are going to pass those bonuses on to the next person. What just happened? I don't know what that was. Uh, generally speaking, I always think that Warp Drag is one of the best options you can take. Uh, if you have Fae, this can be really good. And this one, I think, is actually quite useful, but not as good. It always just underperforms what I expect it to. But Warp Drive is just, you go first. Which is just, it's just really good. It takes out that coin flip element of the game. Moppet is always interesting, and never is good enough. However, I don't really need the 17.5. That might be kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, we also finished our Cowardly Lion quest, which is nice, but they're on 11.15, and I think that Cowardly Lion is just an actually really, really solid unit, um, because they don't attack. Um, it lets you can, you can have your hunt abilities attack more than once, you can have your ranged abilities get sort of protected in the back line, it's very powerful. We'll see. I'm assuming that what happened was that Santa Claus got hit, and that caused it to summon two toys, because they're golden. However... I didn't see them get hit, so I was very surprised. I guess I wasn't watching closely enough. Hmm. We could go into a Spoiled Prince. Every time you get a toy, you're going to get a bonus, which doesn't add up to a ton, but if Santa Claus is spitting out two toys and goodie bags sometimes hit a toy, it could add up to a lot. I could see it. Uh, we could also move goodie bag into the back if we think they're big enough when we'd rather have Daisy Jones go off. But the problem is that we want Goodie Bag to continue getting bigger. And so unless something on our board is making our Goodie Bag bigger, it's just going to stagnate. So I think that having it in the front row and letting it get the benefit of the bounty contract is more important. However, I think we might be done with Plunder Penny, so I think I will take a Spoiled Prince. I might as well swap these zones so that Santa Claus goes first. And then I think right now we just take giant growth on our goodie bag. I think that again, we need to be investing stats for this to be worth it. And it's also gonna help it be able to continue hunting. Well, unless it attacks into something slightly bigger than it. Hey, so a fun thing about selling Plunder Penny is that since they were a common, um, yeah, a common character is that now they're available for goodie bag to summon. They previously weren't available as a summon because summons only hit things you don't have. Now, I was saying, ooh, maybe Spoiled Prince. Uh, I am already over it. I think we just take the Spirit Dragon. Um, Spirit Dragon, I do think, is worth having Daisy Jones try to hit. Maybe we even do this and have Daisy Jones try to hit the Spirit Dragon. And then Goody Bag, hopefully, is able to survive long enough to hunt. But if they can't, that's fine, too. We could take a Mimic here, which could be really, really interesting if we can make it stick. I kind of like that. Cowardly Lion's not really doing a lot for us right now. So, yeah, I like that a lot. I'm going to... I could also take a Rudolph. I think at this point in the game, a uncommon treasure just isn't that impressive. So, yeah, let's go with the... Let's go with the Mimic here. Mimic really needs you to invest stats in it. So it's not... Oh, I didn't have space, so I didn't actually get to summon anything. That was unfortunate. Still, worked out for us. Spear Dragon is now going to Silver. I think that is great. Um, and because they have Treasure Horde and we have a Mimic, now our Mimic now has Treasure Horde. So this is what makes Mimic really, really strong, is that every time you recruit something with Treasure Horde, they're going to get, in this case, plus six, which is going to add up. Merlin, on the other hand, is absolutely massive, and I think we just replace our Santa Claus. We like Santa Claus here, but whoo, Merlin, Merlin's gonna do more. Merlin's gonna do a lot more. It's gonna allow us to consistently make Goodie Bag bigger and bigger and bigger, and we really want that Goodie Bag right now, so I think that is the play. Now, slot buffs are really Goodie Bag's best friend because the summon will also get the benefit of the slot buff. However, let's just go with Spoonful of Sugar. Ooh, maybe we don't. 
Hmm, I was gonna just go into spells because plus five to everybody is pretty good with Merlin. However, we do have this treasure hoard, which will bonus our mimic. It's a little bit hard to say, right? Because I'm treasure hoard is giving plus six currently, which Merlin is just better than that. But if Merlin is always better than buying something with treasure hoard, do I do I ever use mimic ever again, right? Like, like, what's the point of having a Mimic on the board? I think that's kind of the answer here, is that it's kind of obsolete now that I have Merlin, unfortunately, because I can always just take a spell instead, and that's a bigger bonus than Treasure Horde is. Unless my Treasure Horde gets really big, in which case that changes, but we'll see. Unfortunately, Daisy Jones is not working for us, so I think we're going to move these around. Uh, I will quickly take the Despicable Shmi, I think. Well, no, I think I'd rather just cast... Uh, uh, it's called Isle Huff and Isle Puff? I just thought it was called Huff and Puff. Hmm. No, I didn't think that. You're right. I just... It's been a while since I've said it or read it. Uh, Bahamut. Yeah, we just straight up replace our mimic with Bahamut. There we go. Or we could go into Frankenstein's Doctor. A very solid one. A very solid one. Because it gives farewell, it also means that Daisy Jones will trigger the back row. Yeah, I think we just take Frankenstein's Doctor replacing Mimic. Now Daisy Jones does have two farewell abilities it's hitting because all of the characters have this farewell ability. So we don't even have to worry about them not having any good targets. But uh, there we go. All right. Beauty, beauty, beauty. What did we get? Scar. We took a hit there. Not a huge deal. We should be still getting more in the long run. I will take Merlin here. Uh, to silver, we'll take goodie bag up to silver. We have a lot of silvers now. Beautiful. Let's just start taking on hands on deck, buffing our entire board. And then hopefully, ooh. So Sorcerer's Mop is now an option and it is very, very strong. When you summon a character, give it my attack and health. This was, um, implemented recently at the time i've been about a week i think at the time of recording this and because we have merlin it's going to get bigger and bigger unfortunately we have goodie bag and spirit dragon both of which are summons that do not actually care about this bonus that much it's a fine bonus but it's not a huge bonus that said ooh. I think we just bank it for now and get it later when it's silver. Ooh, that's not good. We don't like that. Okay, that could be a lot worse, but we are not doing what we want to be doing here. And there, their Frankenstein's just bigger than ours. Okay, that was closer than I thought it was going to be, so not too bad. And Merlin's now going up from a 5 to a 10. Beautiful. Excalibur, his buffs to your heroes are doubled. This is retroactive. It is all buffs that have ever been applied to your hero are doubled, and all future buffs are doubled. However, we only have the one hero. Big Brass Cannonballs, on the other hand, is that any time a character attacks, it gets plus 10. And Jax Beanstalk lets us pivot well. I don't think that Jax is going to do a lot. I think Excalibur is the strongest pick, but it's not necessarily relevant for our board. Big Brass Cannonballs is going to help us reliably grow our goodie bag, and that is probably more important. Let's take the Golden Spirit Dragon here. That will be beautiful. Everything. Treasure Horde 6 and gives a character Treasure Horde 6. Statue of Olympus is a free spell. Every time this thing casts a spell, it means that Merlin's going to trigger it, which is probably the best pull. However, Hand of Midas is every time you, your each turn, new shop has a gold, which means you can bank that gold for another treasure. So it's a very reliable treasure generation, which could be very good. I think this is the long-term play, and this is the short-term play, and we should go for the long-term play because we got the Lich King's Heart at the beginning, and that is the benefit of Lich King's Heart, is it lets you do these long-term plays. So we'll do that. We'll see how we're doing. Beautiful. Goody Bag was able to hunt. We love that. Um, and we were even able to trigger Spirit Dragon using our 
Um, Daisy Jones, which is beautiful. Two survives, healed a heart. We did get our golden um, Hand of Midas turned Wizard of Oz golden, which is getting plus 32, plus 32, which is cool. I'm not so cool that I want to put it on my board, but it is so cool that I'm tempted to not take Frankenstein's Doctor. Like, I don't really need that Doctor that much. It's not that big a deal. Do I want a gold more? Honestly, I think I want to take the double double the most. Wow, this is all, there's three good options here. Double double lets me hit this 27 26 and turn it into a like over 50 50, which is very nice. Really, really like that. I think that's better. I think the double double is actually the strongest play here, which is wild. Daisy Jones is now up to gold as well. That's beautiful. Now they will trigger the Farewell Bills of Cares behind you twice. So hopefully she has enough room to do that. And hopefully she will survive to be able to hunt. Poison Apple is villains. Um, knock people down to one hit. Dragon Crown. Everyone has Dragon. Everyone has Treasure Horde is good. We are already up to a good eight, and this will bring us up to nine. So that's just flat plus nine across the board, which will continue to grow as we get more treasures. Toy box is when you recruit or summon a toy, it gets plus one plus one, and then its ability improves, which could be okay, but we're not guaranteed to get into toys. That's not really what we're doing here. I think the dragon crown is the best. Also, anything summoned gets the dragon, uh, the treasure horde bonus as well, because it's a passive effect that all of our characters have. Okay. How big is that Kraken? It has gotten bigger than our goodie bag, unfortunately. However, Mighty Mouse saves the day. All right, beautiful. We have this triggering. It only gave us a uncommon, so I think Eureka is much better. It gives us a bonus shop if we target a mage, such as Merlin. And of course, Merlin is giving plus 10 to all of them. This has been adding up. I haven't talked about it much, but like it has been adding up. Um, Midas Touch can let us turn our goodie bag into a treasure, I think, that, or a gold. I think that is the right play here because if we actually naturally make this into a gold goodie bag, that's only going to give us a rare treasure, and at this point in the game, that's not that big a deal. Much, much better as a spell. Now, the gold goodie bag says, summon a random common character then give it a double my stats so suddenly suddenly it's getting pretty good abracadabra gives us a new shop that's all spells and of course merlin loves that because that's just a free spell cast plus a new shop of more spells this is our first true love kiss we've seen the entire game and we have a decision to make do we want to true love's kiss something this will turn it into a character one level higher. If we target something legendary, it will go to the secret shop level, which is unable to be accessed other than means as such as this. So, do we want to do that? I really like my spirit dragon. And I really like my... Like, look how much Frankenstein's Doctor has done for us. Like, it's been actually kind of huge. However... Secret Rare is probably better. That's just that's just the, the reality of Secret Rare. It's just probably better. I don't know if it's better than the Spirit Dragon, and I think that we've done a lot of work with Frankenstein's Doctor, and I think we're done with them. I think I'm happy to let them go. So, True Love's Kiss. Let's see. Frankenstein's Doctor, True Love, transforms them into... Spirit of Vengeance. Treasure Horde 1, that's... Not natural, that's because of this. Farewell, I gain attack and health equal to the damage I was dealt. Now I believe Daisy Jones will not trigger that. Unless they've changed it, that won't actually trigger because they're not dealt damage at the time of the farewell triggering. So, First of all, we were able to successfully hunt using our um, front line there. The funny thing is that we don't actually really care if Goody Bag hunts at this point in the game. It's not actually relevant. Uh, and yeah, Spirit of Vengeance didn't even get to attack. Um, solid game. Solid game. That was, um, there was a few rough rounds there, but that worked out great. We super didn't need the Lich King's Heart, but it didn't hurt us. Like, not having that uncommon treasure did not slow us down. That's always the risk. Some people look at Lich King's Heart and go, well, that's, I don't impact my board. I'm not making my, myself stronger. Is that worth it? And it's debatable. 
I think it usually is, unless you have a really important synergy piece offered to you instead. All right, two rewards. Ganondorf. I should have stayed on that screen longer. I, I clicked in through too fast. 